I just finished building this one of one custom beautiful looking RTX 4090 with the Intel i9-14900K. If you guys want to check out this build and see how I built it, stick around. Starting it off right, we got the MSI Pro Z790-VC Wi-Fi. This board actually does come with Wi-Fi 7 and it's at a fantastic price. So if you're in the market for a new motherboard, I highly recommend you check something like this out. And let's go ahead, open this up and see what we get inside. So first we get the motherboard, which is very nice, and the IO shield, which we're gonna use, as well as the Wi-Fi cables. If you are using a second M.2, which we aren't in this case, you're definitely gonna need this standoff for it. This. Wow, tons of PCIe slots. It has all the nice features, Wi-Fi 7, so amazing board. Let's go ahead, put this down, and let's start with the rest of the build. Moving on, we got the i9-14900K from Intel. This is a phenomenal CPU, especially if you wanna go into high performance gaming, rendering, 3D animation, all that stuff. Uh, one thing about it is it does get a little hot, so you definitely wanna pair it up with a contact frame. Let's get into it. I really like this Intel i9. It has a little Petri dish, it looks super cool. And let's see, processor is inside right here. Open it up and let's put this in first before we remove the contact frame. Just pop that up and you will see two little notches at the top and at the bottom. Those will align perfectly with the motherboard. If you don't align it perfectly, you can bend some pins and that's gonna be very unfortunate because once you bend pins, you can RMA it and you can't return it. So go ahead, put the CPU in and next we're gonna go ahead and remove the contact frame. I usually like to do one corner to the next and we're gonna pop off this top piece just like this. Now we will reuse these screws here for the contact frame. Go ahead, plop those in. I usually like to pre-put the screws into the contact frame before putting it down, just like this. Go ahead and lay it down. And now we can screw that on tight. For this part, I usually like to do corner to corner. So I'll start with the top right. I'll move on to the bottom left and then I'll make my way around. Moving on, we got T-Force Delta DDR5 RAM running at 7200 megahertz. This is some of the fastest RAM on the market. It's incredible. And one of the best things about this T-Force RAM is that it does come with lifetime warranty. So let's go ahead and add this in. You will notice that one side is slightly longer than the other and you wanna match that on your motherboard. If you put it in the wrong way, you do have a chance of breaking the motherboard and you don't wanna do that. You wanna hear those two little clicks. Let's go hear it again. Beautiful. Now that you've heard the two clicks, we know that the RAM's in place and we can move on to the SSD. Moving on, we got the Team Group 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. It's a phenomenal SSD for the price. It reads up to 5,000 megabytes per second and it does come with a five-year warranty. So let's go ahead, open this guy up and let's take it out. Now with these motherboards, you will see an M.2 shield right here. This is to cool it down and keep the temps pretty good on your SSD. If it's your first SSD, you definitely wanna plug it in here. If it's not, then you can add it in as a secondary right below. We can easily go ahead and put that SSD right in, secure it down with a little holder. And next, let's go ahead, add this right back on. Now that we got all of that out of the way, the next thing is to move on to the cooler. For this, we're using a Cooler Master 360 millimeter AIO in white. It's an amazing cooler. I absolutely love using these. The price is right and they do a phenomenal job at cooling. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we need inside. All right, great. Now that we've got everything ready, let's go ahead and add some thermal paste. I usually like to do a little X pattern. Um, if you try your best, do an X pattern. If not, you could just leave one little dot in the middle and that should be adequate. Don't forget to take off this peel. I'm gonna say it two times and go ahead. Let's add this cooler down in three, two, one and perfect it's on amazing so now we'll go ahead and screw that aio securely in place i usually like i said do one corner at a time start the bottom left this time and then i'll go right here to the top right and i'll make my way around right after perfect so now that we got the cpu on the cooler on the ram and ssd the motherboard is finally complete and now it's time to move on to the case for the case, we're using a Montax Sky 2. These just came out, they're super nice. We got the Frost White Edition. Let's go ahead, open it up. We always, always open up PC cases from the bottom. It just makes our lives much easier. Go ahead, do that. Make a little cut there and watch. I'm telling you guys, if you don't already do this, it's gonna save your life when opening up PC cases. Open it from the bottom, lay it down on the table. And it just slides right out, just like that. The next thing we're gonna do is add the motherboard in. 
So I got my motherboard here and let's go ahead and lay it down. Perfect. Now that the motherboard's in, the next thing we got to do is screw down the motherboard, just like so. There are about nine screws that you got to screw in. Please make sure if you do have a smaller motherboard, you add the standoffs for it. Otherwise, control your board and you don't want to do that. Moving on to the power supply, we got this Thermaltake 1200 watt power supply. It does come with a 10 year warranty, 100% Japanese capacitors, an amazing power supply. Plus it does come with white cables and we are using a 4090 so we could definitely use the extra headroom with the 1200 watt. Let's go ahead, unbox it and let's see what cables we need inside. This is the best part about having a fully modular power supply is you get to choose which cables you need and which you don't need. So power cord, I'm gonna keep to the side this whole bundle of joy, the only thing I really need from here is the 600 watt power. And let's go ahead and open the second bundle of joy. In here, we need a CPU. We're gonna use the second CPU, 24 pin. And because we don't need any PCIe, we could just leave that all there. Let's go ahead and add these connections in, just like so. So we got the case now, power supply is done. Let's go ahead, add it here to the bottom. Always make sure the fan faces towards the bottom. You'll see the little opening there. That's gonna give it much better airflow. And let's go ahead, pop that in, just like so. Now we can go ahead, screw it in. There are four sides. So we got the power supply in, got all the cables done. Next thing we gotta do is install the liquid cooler. So with one hand, you hold it with the other hands, go ahead and pull these cables through. These cables are going to be for the AIO fans. Beautiful. And now that we've got all three, I know this part's difficult. If you have a friend, call them. If you don't and you're like me, just try your best. One hand it and should fit perfectly in here. There shouldn't be any gaps, shouldn't be should be a little tight, but should be able to fit right there. It's now officially time to move on to my favorite part, the GPU. The box is bigger than the case, but I can guarantee the card will fit inside, which is good. Let's go ahead and open this up. This is the Aero 4090 edition from Gigabyte. Wow. That is super heavy. The reason I love using these cards in particular is because they are all white. So if you're going for an all white themed, this is definitely the card to get. The only other white card option, I believe there is the ROG Strix, which is like $400 more than this. So no point of getting that. Just go ahead and get this Gigabyte Arrow. Ooh, beautiful. A lot of plastic on it. This is uh, to protect from scratches. So let's go ahead and peel all that off. All right, guys. So some good news and some bad news about the GPU. The GPU does come with these included sag bracket that you just connect to the motherboard just like so and the GPU holds in place. The bad news is that with this motherboard in particular, it only has one ARGB port and it's placed right here. So if you were to add this in, it would either break the RGB. So you can either choose ARGB color or the sag bracket. Sag bracket's definitely more useful. However, there are alternatives which we will be including later on there is gonna be a standoff right here that we're gonna add. So sadly, we can't use this, but we do find alternatives. So let's go ahead, without further ado, let's get that GPU plugged in. I'm gonna move this USB-C cable just a little bit higher up so it doesn't interfere. And you wanna go ahead, line it up. And once it's lined up, three, two, one, you're gonna hear a click, just like a chiropractor. Perfect. Go ahead, add this cable nicely in, and let's go ahead, screw down the GPU right in place. And just like that, with the graphics card in, we've now completed this beautiful looking system. But before I turn it on, I just wanna quickly let you guys know, if you wanna check out this build, it is available on our website for sale. Head on over to www.gamertech.ca, check it out. Another thing too, please leave us a like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, three, two, one, Woo!
beautiful. We got all the RGB, all the fans are spinning, the RAM just turned on. This is a beautiful looking system. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Till next time, peace.